by the way. Al Giordano's a brave journalist. But the point I'm making with this is that the criminality had gotten so out of hand by May of this year that Citibank would openly buy a known drug money laundering bank and put the drug money launderer on its board of directors. That's the need for drug cash in the U.S. economy right now. By the way, Citibank's record of in involvement in drug money laundering is extremely well documented in the uh, Wall Street Journal and the New York Times, it laundered some, I think, three or four hundred million dollars for Raul Salinas de Gortari, the brother of the former Mexican president. Now let's go to some other things that are going on in the economy so that we set you up to understand what's going on around September the 11th. The U.S. economy is being looted. Anybody here remember the savings and loan scandal? Yeah. You know the gang that's in the White House is the same gang that brought us the savings and loan scandal? That took $500 billion out of your pockets. Well, here's some new developments in the government. And by the way, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. Bill Clinton's a sleazebag, too. Okay? That so-called liberal put a million, almost a million nonviolent drug offenders in prison to boost the shares of companies like Corrections Corporation of America and Wackenhut. He destroyed many of the welfare laws, and you know, he's, one is not better than the other. But notice this, HUD loses, HUD, Housing and Urban Development, $59 billion. When was the last time you lost $59 billion? <laughs> this was from testimony in Congress uh, by Susan Gaffney, Inspector General of HUD. And you know what HUD said they did when they couldn't figure out where the money went? We made an adjustment in our checkbook. <laughs> Where is that money going? Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find out before we're through. Now, if you thought that was bad, the Defense Department cannot account for $1.1 trillion that seems to have vanished within the tangled system of financial accounting put in place by private contractors. You know who the private contractors are? Lockheed Martin and DynCorp. Okay? HUD. Oh, I dropped the microphone. I have more microphones on me than the FBI has in my living room. Um, <laughs> uh, this is from uh, a very great reporter, a very courageous woman who had served on the Capitol Hill for many years and became an investigative reporter named Kelly O'Meara, who writes for the Washington Times Insight magazine. I know it's owned by the Moon, but Kelly does fabulous work, and she's written a great piece on civil rights after the September 11th attack. The point is, is that $4.4 trillion in adjustments to the Pentagon books had to be cooked to compile the required financial statements and that $1.1 trillion of that amount could not be supported by any reliable information. All right, now, there's one thing I've got to do before we get to September the 11th and what's happening since. It's easy to say that this is a war about oil and you're going to know more about it than, uh, uh, than you did when you came in here when you leave. The entire world economy is on the brink of a major collapse. Two days before the attacks on the World Trade Center, I issued an emergency bulletin to all of my subscribers. And by the way, uh, there's a table over here, and those of you who would like to subscribe, uh, we have the information there for you. I'll put a website up. We also have videotapes of a lecture for, on Wall Street's War for Drug Money, which is like two hours on what I did with the economy that I gave at the USC School of International Relations last December. And we have those tapes over there. I think Chris Milligan's over there somewhere. Chris, wherever you are. But I issued a bulletin saying that we were on the brink of an economic collapse that would make 1929 look like a picnic. And in the three weeks prior to the attacks, the Dow had dropped almost 900 points. Now, what we have seen since then, and you must understand this clearly, is that the Dow's so-called resurrection to close to 10,000 10, points is strictly the result of a massive infusion of cash from the U.S. Treasury, which is your cash, 
which is being given to the corporate executives and not to the people who have been laid off. And every time you see the Dow go up, you'd better believe that another five, ten thousand people have lost their jobs. We are also in a global financial crisis that began in 1998 with the collapse of the bond markets and hedge fund derivatives, the money laundering investigations, and the mega mergers in the financial industry. The war buildup after September 11th is now shifting resources from domestic needs to the defense establishment. This fulfills a Bush-Cheney campaign promise to boost defense spending. But it is not sustainable for a number of reasons. And then this brings us into the issue of oil briefly, and we'll get into this more later. And basically is that oil production in the world is peaking. The last untapped major oil fields in the world are in two places actually. First, Central Asia, and we'll get into that in depth. And second, guess where? In Colombia. Okay. Uh, and this is now a war, and this is now a moment in human history when the age of oil is nearing its end. Because world population and demand World population and demand will, out, will exceed production sometime within roughly the next 10 years. And we're going to get into that for why. But now let's go back into the warnings about September the 11th. And I didn't do a lot of this, and uh, we have time. Osama bin Laden was, is, of course, a Saudi Arabian by birth. His family is exceptionally wealthy. They own not only major construction companies, but they are heavy investors in high technology stocks like Nortel. Uh, they have a piece of Pepsi, I think, and Coca-Cola. They're into everything. They're very wealthy. In 1976, Osama's older brother, Salim bin Laden, hired a man in Texas by the name of Jim Bath, who has CIA connections to handle all the investments in the United States for the Bin Laden family. Jim Bath also happens to be a personal, almost lifelong friend and former Air National Guard pilot with George W. Bush. And immediately after Jim Bath made the arrangements to, or, or, to took over the Bin Laden family's finances, Jim Bath made a $50,000 investment in George W. Bush's first company, Arbusto Energy. The connections between the Bushes and the Bin Ladens become much more clear as you move forward, and we have reported this in From the Wilderness. Again, I was using stories, and you'll see this. When George Herbert Walker Bush made trips to Saudi Arabia in 1998 and 2000 to meet with the Saudi royal family and to meet with the Bin Laden family, which he finally acknowledged, along with former British Prime Minister uh, John Major, on behalf of a company called the Carlyle Group, which is the 11th largest defense contractor in the, company, in, in the country. Carlyle Group is a privately owned corporation. That means they do not have to report their ownership or financial activities to the SEC. Yet they provide all kinds of the highest technology equipment to the U.S. Pentagon. And Carlyle, of course, has made several, probably billion dollars, and will as a result of this war. In that context, Osama bin Laden went to Afghanistan in 1979, 1980, maybe the early 80s, to fight the Russians, and he was supported by the CIA. And it's interesting to note that when the Russians invaded Afghanistan, zero percent, and this is from Professor Alfred McCoy of the University of Wisconsin, who's also one of my subscribers, in a great book called The Politics of Heroin, zero percent of the U.S. consumption of heroin came from Pakistan, Afghanistan before the Russian invasion. By 1985, 86, 40% of the heroin in the United States came from that region, all controlled by the Central Intelligence Agency. And, and uh, Osama bin Laden came up under a guy named Gulbadin Hekmatyar, uh, who ran six heroin labs, all protected by the CIA and controlled by the agency. Uh, he has been a CIA asset for a long period of time. We'll see more about that. He is a CIA creation. Now we come to September 11th, and we're going to go into a timeline here. And I have written several stories, and I was on the radio here with Sheila, Sheila Hamilton at KPAM just a few days after the attacks. And I was saying the U.S. government knew these attacks were going to take place and did not stop them. And I keep building to that evidence. But I'm going to show you a couple of things now. Not by any means all of the evidence.